1 Thessalonians 5 and 23. And it reads, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So we're going to talk about soul ties. Paul writes, I pray your, I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless. So he's talking about a whole person, but then he broke it down into three parts. That your whole spirit, your soul, and body. And that's actually the order of the composition of man. We are a spirit, we possess a soul, and we live in a body. All right. And he wants, he, he's, he's saying that these be preser preserved blameless into the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now verse 22 it says, abstain from all appearance of evil. That means don't even look, don't even stand in front of a liquor store. Amen? In other words, abstain from the appearance of evil. Faithful is he that called you, verse 24, who also will do it. Do what? He will preserve you blameless, spirit, soul, and body. So faithful is God. God called you. He's faithful to preserve you. Amen? With everything going on in this world today, God is able to preserve your mind, your will, yes. your emotions. That's your soul. Yes. He's able to preserve your body. Praise God. Amen. And he's able to preserve the most important part of you, your spirit. Yeah. You know, they say once a, a man's spirit is broken, you got him. I mean, you know, you, you can do whatever you want with him. Your spirit is where God communicates to us. So, we want to talk about the qualifications of this preservation. All right. The qualifications of being preserved by God. First, you have to be named by the name of Christ. Mm. That's, in other words, be called a Christian or Christ-like or um, associated with the church, mm -hmm. the body of Christ. That's the qualification of being preserved. You have to qualify by being in the body of Christ. But not just the name. To truly receive the name of God has for you, we must submit. 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 That word submit in the Greek says, um, it's a word called hupo mino. Hupo means remain, mino under. Remain under. Submit means to remain under. Remain under authority. Remain under under God's protective hand. Amen? Yes. So we have to first be associated to, to God to be preserved in the body of Christ. Then we have to submit. And that is the qualifications of being preserved spirit, soul, and body. All right. The Bible says in James chapter 4, 7, submit yourselves therefore to God. It said, where hupomino, submit, remain under Yourselves, yourself is your spirit, soul, and body. Submit, submit your whole spirit, your soul, meaning your mind. Submit your, your emotions. Submit your, your will to God. Mm -hmm. And then what? Resist the devil, yes. and he will flee from you. Now, I mean, you say resist the devil, he and he shall flee. But it says resist the devil, and he will flee from who? From you. The submitted one. Last part of that verse in our main scripture, 1 Thessalonians 5, 24 reads, I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless yes. unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. And then somebody said, won't he do it? Won't he do it? And verse 24 says, who also will do it? So won't he do it? The scripture said, also he will do it. Amen? Yeah. 
So this part, the soul, the soul, the soul. My soul loves Jesus. Your soul. Amen? Right. You have your spirit in your body, but we're going to talk about the soul for a moment. The soul, the, the first mention of the soul is in Genesis chapter 2 and 7. It talks about God forming man. And it reads, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Yes. Amen. So this is the origin of the soul. The origin of the soul comprised of two things. The dust of the earth. It says the dust of the ground, but it's just the, the earth. You look up that word earth, the, the, the Hebrew, original Hebrew, red clay. Mm -hmm. And God scooped that up and breathed into the nostrils the breath of life. So man, God formed man out of the dust of the earth and breathed into his nostrils. Mm -hmm. Now the word breathe is ruah in the Hebrew, and that means wind. Mm -hmm. That's spirit. So God's spirit resuscitated dirt and it became a living soul. Come on now. Amen? Mm -hmm. So that's the origin of the soul, Genesis 2, 7. Now, Souls, we're going to talk about that for a minute. Now, that was the creation of the soul. Now, that word soul in the Latin is animus. Animus. Animus, like where you get the word animal from. Amen. It's the same word for soul. Because when you look at it, animals are alive. Amen. They run around chasing each other and climbing trees. And they'll chase you if you let them. Amen. So they got souls. They animus. But the soul is the agency of man that is composed of the mind, will, and emotions. So the soul of a man is different than the soul of an animal. Because the soul of a man, it says that in Genesis 2, 7, that God breathed into the nostrils. So you don't see God breathing into the nostrils of the animals, of the fish, of the birds. So their soul is guided by instinct. And our soul is guided by intuition. That's what makes our soul, that's what makes us unique as humans. So you get the term great soul, magnanimous. Now there are some people who are just great characters. People like, go down in history like Joan of Arc and Martin Luther King and people of Frederick Douglass and people of great um, Gandhi, you have your great Abraham Lincolns. These, these people were great souls, amen? They spoke the truth to power. Now, wouldn't you like to be like that, amen? Great soul. Some people are a great soul. Yeah. Now, we can learn a lot from, from, even though the animals are different from us, we can learn a lot from the animals. Yeah. See, the animals, they, they deal with instincts. In our elemental spirits such as plants, they we can learn, learn a lot from plants. The, the, the Bible talks about they toil, they spin, and they don't worry. You know, they're clothed and you know they they, they just they get the, the, the rain and they grow. And actually we can learn a lot from a plant that it grows toward the sun. All right. And without complaint or worry. Can we grow toward the Son of God without complaining and worrying? That's what plants do. We can learn a lot also from an ant, for instance. Scripture says in Proverbs 6, 6, Go to the ant, yes. thou slugger. Uh -huh. Consider her ways and be wise. Yeah. Amen. So even these animated creatures on the earth, the plants and different things, we can, we can learn mm -hmm. as humans mm -hmm. just by sitting and watching. Amen. Uh, sometimes I believe that they, they came up with certain things like the airplane. Uh, they seen the, the, the wings of an eagle and they created, we, uh, they said, we can do that too. Huh. Amen. So man learns a lot from God's creation. Yes. Amen. Matter of fact, God's creation points to the fact that there is a God. Yeah, yeah. Because how did it come into being? There had to be a magnificent 
intelligent creation behind all this. So just by looking at nature, looking at the sun, looking at the moon, looking at the trees, looking at the ocean, looking at all these things, you have to say in your heart of hearts, in your spirit, there is a God. There is a God. Amen. So, so, so because we have a spirit, we have been endowed by God to be as he. Yeah. Let me say that again. We have been endowed. Clark sisters made a song, endow me. Mm -hmm. Amen. We have already been endowed. Mm -hmm. You've been endowed when, at, when the doctor spanked you and you start hollering as a baby, you already endowed. Mm -hmm. Amen. We have been endowed by God to be as he. Yes. Since a part of him was used to create us. Mm -hmm. Yet God did not diminish one iota when he blew the breath of life into Adam. Mm -hmm. He remained God. All right. But yet we became living souls. Yes. And we are endowed to be as he. Jesus. But, but, but people are weak. Because we have the earth. The earth part of us, the dust part is weak. Yeah. People are weak because we are part earth. Scripture says in Genesis 6, 3, we're going to take it back. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man. For that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be 120 years. So in Genesis 6, by the time we get to Genesis 6, there's a deep markation in the lifespan of man. Before Genesis 6, men were living, according to the biblical account, hundreds of years. Yeah. Now imagine, we said the times past as you living um, a life, and you can live your grandfather's alive, your great-grandfather's alive, your great-great-grandfather, and everybody's sitting down at the dinner table. Well. Because the oldest one is almost 800 years old. Mm. And they calling you youngster at 250. Mm. Well, that's the way it was before Genesis 6. Mm -hmm. But at, by the time Genesis 6 came around, man had got so evil, man had got corrupted, and, and they say that uh, there was gene splicing, and you had all kinds of strange creatures flying around. It says, uh, the man shall not strive. But God found a perfect man who was Noah. Mm -hmm. Genesis 6. Amen. And he destroyed the world, destroyed the earth, yeah. destroyed every living soul besides the eight, the eight mm -hmm. of Noah's family. Amen. Amen. Because we are made of earth, we're weak. But and, and we know that God chose. God chose uh, different souls. We know in today's society, we talk about fairness and equality and equal rights and things of that nature, but that's not even in nature. You know, we want everybody to get a fair shake, and some people, they got more going on than them, and sometimes, you know, in, in life you see some people are born with certain gifts. Yeah. You know, there's some natural things, you know, you have people who are born very tall, and they can handle, and they develop skills, and they're good at sports, or they're very endowed with intellect, or they're very physically uh, attractive. It's certain things, amen. Everybody is not born with the same things. Well. So this is like God choosing certain souls to do certain things. Mm -hmm. Everybody's job is important. Everybody, whatever you do is important. Everybody is important. Yes. Amen. So it comes to the thing where, where um, sin came upon the earth and God had to make a choice. He had to make a choice and he said, I have to go down and straighten this out. So he had to send his son. So his son had to come through a people. Yeah. And the people was chosen through the, the seed of Abraham. The Bible says that Abraham was the friend of God. And through Abraham, there would be a son that would be born, and his name would be Emmanuel. So through the through the seed of Abraham, and Abraham had Jake, um, 
Isaac, and Isaac had Jacob, and Jacob had the 12 sons of Israel, and, and um, I think it was 13 all together, but it was 12, and then the Levites and, and, and Benjamin, and then out of that, Judah, the fourth born, out of the tribe of Judah, Leah's fourth born son would rise a Messiah called the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Because in Genesis 17 it says, and the uncircumcised man child whose flesh is of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He hath broken my covenant. God commanded the children of Abraham to receive circumcision. Cir circumcised all the males because that was a sign that those were the chosen people. And out of those people, out of those circumcised people would come the, the, the Messiah, Emmanuel. And God affirmed, God the Father affirmed Jesus, his son, his only begotten son. Amen. And you can see in the scripture in uh, Matthew, the third chapter, the, thir the 13th verse, it says that then Jesus from Galilee, to Jordan, um, Jesus cometh from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee. And cometh thou to me? John saying, Why are you coming to me? I need to be coming to you. And Jesus answered, verse 15, and said, Suffer it, it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. So Jesus explained to John, who were actual cousins, Jesus explained to John that it has to be so because this is to fulfill the righteousness of God. Then John said, okay, you're in the scripture. You're in the book. Amen. You can agree. See, we got to agree on one thing. We got to agree on the word of God. You know, we can disagree about different things. You're a Republican, you're a Democrat, you like black socks, you like white socks, but we need to agree on the word of God. Now, the word of God is not given for any private interpretation. That means that it says what it says, and it, con it confirms itself throughout the scripture. Amen? The Bible says you need to rightly divide the word of God. Amen? So you can prove what is the true and acceptable will of God. So Jesus um, said, to, said to John, okay, this, this is the word of God. I, I, you got to baptize me. And then John said, come on. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straight up out the water, and lo, the heavens were open unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased yes. so this is an audible voice God the father affirms Jesus the son All right. we're still talking about the soul but we're talking about God the father affirming Jesus with an audible voice from heaven People heard it. And then they seen a dove come upon his shoulder. Yeah. Amen? Mm -hmm. So this was an approval that, yes, this is the one. Yeah. So the dove didn't land on, on, on um, John's shoulder. Mm -hmm. Because John was the man. He was the one doing all the preaching. He was the one who had the followers. Yeah. He was the one who had the big church. All right. But the dove landed on Jesus. Amen? Thank God. Now, Jesus went on. Now, we're talking about the soul here. We're talking about the great soul on Jesus. Now, Jesus confirmed it was not robbery to be equal to God. Mm. Now, this takes place after his baptism, after the many miracles. Mm. You know, in John 10, in verse 30, Jesus said, I and my Father are one. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, 
many good works I've showed you. So this is visual. First God had an audible voice. Now Jesus going around, the Bible says Jesus went around doing good, healing the sick, raising the dead, opening the blind eyes. He went around showing people. It was visual. People seen what he was doing. Yeah. Now you can see a man laying down for years who couldn't walk and then you see him walk across the aisle. So you seen it with your eyes. First you heard it. Then you seen it. And the Jew and, and, and Jesus saying, which one of you, which one of these works are you criticizing me for? Which one of these works is, is this is a blasphemy from? Now these Jews, this is the church, so to speak. Amen. Jesus answered, and many good works I have showed you from my father, for which of those works do you stone me? The Jews answered him saying, for a good work we stone you not, not from what we seen, not from what we heard from God, but for blasphemy, because you being a man, making yourself God. Because Jesus, the scripture says that he thought it not robbery. Amen? Mm -hmm. He thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about the soul. We're talking about them saying, before, before they said he thought it was not robbery, we're going to digress for a minute from the Pharisees. He said, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Now your mind is just, the mind is the, is the, is the, uh, it's the central point of your soul. Uh -huh. Amen. Your mind is a terrible thing to waste. United Negro College Fund. Your mind is so important that once the battlefield is, is, is won in the mind, that means the devil, he got you. Once you believe his lies, once you follow, fall into uh, perdition and you just got your mind going, then the devil don't have to spend any time on you anymore. He can put his forces on those who are really doing damage to his kingdom, like the anointed preacher of God, preachers of God. Because the mind is so important. So the Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And the mind was, he thought it not robbery, to be equal with God. All right, now. now they couldn't receive that. Mm. But just like John. Just like he told John. He told John. Become as us to forget, fulfill all righteousness. He came to fulfill the law. Yeah. Not to destroy it. Yes. Jesus confirmed it was not robbery. Mm -hmm. So one is a. Is a audible voice. Two, it was the visual signs and wonder which they wanted to stone him. All right. And then he just walked through the crowd and because it wasn't his time yet. Huh. Then later on the son of God was exalted. Huh. After it was all said and done and Jesus came to destroy the works of the enemy. Yes. Thank you. That's his purpose. The purpose of God was to destroy the works of the enemy. Say it, say it. The enemy who deceived Eve, mm. who introduced sin into a sinless world, yeah. was meant to be destroyed by who? Jesus Christ, who came from the loins of Abraham, but yet he was he was born through the Holy Spirit. Yes. But his human ancestry came from the the the, the Jews. Mm. But he was the son of God, the only begotten son of God. Who thought it not robbery to be equal with God. So let this mind be in you. Christ, the hope of glory. Great soul. Be of the mind of Christ. You can do whatever God has put you here to do. But the enemy is trying to stop you. Yeah. He's trying to put things in your path to make you go not 
the way God wants you to go. But what he does is he put things and people in your path to make you go off course. But let this mind be in you to keep moving forward in the anointing of God. So let this mind, but let not only this mind, but let the will. That's a part of your emotion, your will. And Jesus, let this will be in you. What? The will that says, not my will, but thy will be done. Mm -hmm. Let this will be in you that was in Christ Jesus, well. who did the will of God and not did do his own will, but he did the will of his father. Yeah. And it caused his father to turn his back on Jesus on the cross. Because God couldn't look at sin. So this was the most excruciating thing. Now some people define hell. Some theologians say that hell is a separation from God. That's true hell. When you're separated from God with no reprieve, that's hell. So when Jesus was on that cross and, and, and God had to turn his face in the earth and the sun was blotted out, it was darkness on the earth. Imagine all it's dark at one o'clock, two o'clock. Darkness. Dark as it was, it was not at midnight. God turned his back on his on his own begotten son because God couldn't look at that sin. He had to carry our sins yes. to redeem us back, to reconcile us back to God. Yes. This is the gospel message. Mm -hmm. This is what we're trying to get to you. Get redeemed so you can be accepted into God's grace once again. Now, your spirit, your spirit is a part of you, but this soul is so important. Because that's where the battlefield is. This is where all the fights come from. That's what you got to overcome. You got to overcome your flesh. You have to crucify your flesh. You got to crucify your will. You got to crucify the things in your mind that say, that do this. That's not of God. And then your emotions, especially the females, the emotional part of us. You know, we can get misled. And the men too. Yes. Emotional. Yes. But let this mind be in you. That was in Christ Jesus. Because you might be tired, but you still got to get up and go to work. Well. Sometimes when you got responsibilities, you have to put your emotions aside. Don't it says when we were a child, we act like a child. We thought as a child. But when we became a man, we put away those childhood things. Put we away. put away those emotional things. Amen? Yeah. Now the soul is led by the things of man. Huh. The, th the soul is led by the things of man. That's why some people are great soul because they master their will. They master their mind. They master their emotions. Huh. Once you have mastery over your mind, once you have mastery over your emotions, once you have mastery over your will, you have mastery over yourself. That makes that, and then you come into that magna. They call it magna cum laude. That's how in the educational field, magna. And then they even have something higher than that. It's called summa. Amen. And it's probably something higher than that. Amen. Because I know some people who graduated with a four point something, four point two, four. I thought I only went to four. I thought a hundred was the only you can get, but some folks got higher than that. Five. Amen. The Bible says there's no depths in God. You can go to higher heights and deeper depths. Amen. So you can be magna magnanimous. You can be superlative. Amen. It's up to you. Amen. The spirit is led by God. We can learn that in Galatians. The spirit man is led by God, but the soul are, are led by the things of man. Let me tell you, for instance, okay, so God leading you and guiding you. If God leading you and guiding you, who is somebody else to say, where you going? What you doing? How you do that? How much that cost? All these questions. You may not have the answer, but you know God leading you. That's why when you, the Bible says, be led by the spirit. But then in that soul, in that mind, will, and emotional phase, 
you're led by the things of man. That's why the Bible says, train up a child in the way he shall go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. That's the soulish part. If you train up a child in how to think, you know, how to overcome the enemy, how to fight the devil. You train up a child that, that, that teach him things about God's will. Say, teach him that not what I want to do, but doing the will of God. Amen? You training up a ch child to say, no, you got to be a man and take care of your family and don't put your hands on a woman and things of that nature. Mm. Training up a child in the way that he should go. Mm. When he is old, he will not depart. And this is soul ties. Amen. It's not, for instance, being tied to another person. It's being tied to yourself. The tie uh, Ecclesiastes said a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Yeah. So we want a threefold cord around our will, around our mind, and around our emotions. Yeah. Amen. We want to be one. We want to be holy. Amen. That's wholesome. Amen. That's one. Amen. We want to be the same wherever we go. Yes. Amen? Amen. Let this soul be in you. Souls are molded by teaching. Amen? All right. So if you teach a child, what do you feel like doing today? Hmm. You feel like wearing a dress? All right now. And then you put, the, you put a, a, a dress on a boy, and you got a big Colgate smile, and you take him out to get ice cream, and then you ask him next week. He probably say, yeah, I want the dress. Because he know a dress equal ice cream. So we need to train them up. Not train them up in debauchery, but train them up, up in a way that they should go. Amen? Train them up in a wholesome way. Amen. Spiritual creatures are endowed by God. We're all endowed. Amen? We all have some a gift. All right. God has given it to us. So it's up to us. Become a man, become a woman, and do what's convenient for you to please God.